Corn one first. We are T minus 18 seconds from liftoff. We T minus 15 seconds. Would you and your men please follow me? Hey, what the hell is this? This is an emergency. Please follow me now. T minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight. We have ignition. Six, five. We have outboard engines. Three. We have inboard engines. One, zero. We have a launch commit. We have a liftoff at 35 minutes after the hour. Every split second of this historic flight, every intimate detail, every heartbeat was monitored by Mission Control in Houston. This is Capricorn One. We have landed. As millions all over the world watched and listened, the President of the United States spoke to the astronauts across the vastness of space. To the men of Capricorn One, I bring you greetings from your fellow Americans. There's only one small catch. It never happened. It's all a lie. A fantastic $30 billion hoax. Something's wrong, and I don't know what it is. Dig deep enough, you might uncover the truth. Those signals couldn't have come from 300 miles. But the odds are, you'll never live to tell it. Please! I'm not moving an inch. They're on the plane together! There's a device that's on the plane. There's some people, if I don't give them the all-clear signal, they'll explode it. Something's wrong, something big. They know I'm onto it, and they try to kill me. Who's they? I can't tell you. We are dead. You tell me you're in trouble, you're out on bail, you just got fired, I tell you I'll be right over. My head. Awful. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. These people are capable of anything. You sound so close. It's hard to believe you really are that far away in space. It's hard for me to believe it, too. You're up to something. You want my help. It's gotten out of control. It's too big. Capricorn One, this is Houston. Capricorn One, we show red on the heat shield. Capricorn One, this is Houston. We show red on the heat shield. Do you read? Pull that lever down by your feet when I tell you, sonny. Capricorn One, the mission that never got off the ground. July 20th, 1976, the first unmanned spacecraft landed on the planet Mars. Mankind waited, intense expectation, for the answer to the question that had puzzled him for centuries. Is there life on Mars? Those who had never believed the red planet was inhabited, who shook their heads knowingly as if to say, we told you so. The believers pointed out that the instruments could only scan as far as the horizon. If the Martians had sent a space probe to Earth, they argued, they could have landed 
in even less promising terrain, the middle of the Sahara Desert, for example. On the whole, the non-believers won the day. However, if the spacecraft had only landed a few miles further on, things might have been different. Okay, the 1980s came back, or came into being, and we started launching space shuttles into near-Earth orbit, and um, here are some of the films. The Sex is Crazy from Spain. I just got a VHS copy of this yes or day before yesterday, before, before I came here, so I have no idea what this is about, but it's supposed to be a Mars film. Uh, contamination from Italy and West Germany is basically retelling of the aliens story. Uh, the War of the World Next Century I actually had uh, from Poland. I actually had a friend send me this and uh, it's a really interesting film but not for everybody. It's very dystopic. Uh, Sayonara Jupiter from Japan is nominally a Mars film because the first five minutes take place on and around Mars and they find something that sends them out to Jupiter and then Jupiter leaves the solar system. So. It's interesting. And then another super marionation, uh, Terra Hawks from uh, Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. So here's a look at contamination. are there in the universe? Millions. Perhaps billions. Unless they come from much closer, but... Mars has always stimulated man's imagination, but as far as that cave was concerned, there was absolutely nothing in there. You were telling the truth all along. But these are photographs. But there hasn't been another expedition to Mars. No. These were found here, on Earth. Thousands of them. The woman is Stella Holmes, a first-class mind. and lady would like information about our coffee. All your questions will be answered here. Oh, it's too late. Hamilton has got your friends. <coughs>
Okay, in the middle of the 1980s, an unfortunate thing happened to our space program as we lost the space shuttle Challenger. Uh, about that time, my career as a scientist kind of shifted gears. I became a filmmaker working for a local PBS station and uh, being the equipment tech out at San Diego State University for 10 years. Uh, in films, uh, an anime Genesis Climber Mos Piata uh, made its debut. Uh, Star Crystal, which is a low budget film, it's actually our next Mars movie night, uh, the third Friday of the month this month. We'll be taking a look at that. It, I'm not having a. How, how shall I put this? I'm, I'm not expecting great things of it, but we'll see. Uh, the 1986 Invaders from Mars by director Toby Hooper, who did Poltergeist. Much better, f bigger film, uh, better funded, special effects were excellent, but it fell completely flat because unlike its, uh, uh, the original Invaders from Mars, it, you know, the red menace wasn't there. Sociologically, it just did not work. There was a TV, made for TV movie in the US called The Man Who Fell to Earth, take off on the Walter Tevis story again, but I haven't been able to get my hands on that. And then a TV series, War of the Worlds, The Second Invasion, takes place where the uh, George Powell film of the 1953 took over. But here's a look at uh, Star Crystal and Invaders from Mars. to experience a 21st century nightmare. A voyage into an uncharted realm of futuristic fear. An expedition in search of the key to the unknown has uncovered a new form of life. More intelligent. More powerful. More frightening. Than anything ever encountered in space. Star Crystal. No! Roger, look out! Star Crystal, a new form of life and death. David Gardner just woke up to a nightmare in his own backyard. But no one will listen. We landed right back there, right behind the hill. No one will believe. I told you, he needs psychiatric help. And soon, no one will be left. Dad? Are you okay, Dad? Fine. Because something strange is happening to the people of Willow Creek. Everything's fine now. And David Gardner is about to find out why. David! I'm gonna find my mom and dad! I'm here! No! No! David Gardner! Ah! Canon Films presents Toby Hooper's Invaders from Mars. There's no place on Earth to hide. Okay, the worst Mars movie ever is Midnight Movie Massacre or Attack from Mars. Avoid this like the plague. If you get a copy, burn it. It, it was a, a failed film that they released anyway. Basically, they had a, a good story, big cast, including Ad Robinson from uh, War of the Worlds. And uh, they shot for seven days, and they pulled a plug on it. Well, they had all this footage left over, so what do they do is they get a, a cheapy little camera, go to a movie theater that's empty, and show that on the big screen. And meanwhile, you've got all the audience members doing 